In the previous lecture, I have taught you about minimization of DFA and also we have seen an example in the previous lecture in which I explained in detail the step-by-step -step instructions that you have to follow in order to minimize a DFA. So, in this lecture, we have another example where we have to construct a minimum DFA equivalent to the DFA described by this. So, here we have a DFA which has 8 states Q0 to Q7. And our task is to design a minimum DFA equivalent to this. That means we have to design a DFA that works exactly like this, but we want to have minimum number of states. So, how do we do this? We do this by starting off by writing the equivalences, starting from zero equivalence. Now, how do I write the zero equivalence? Writing zero equivalence is very simple. Make two sets in which the first set will contain all the non-final states and the second set will contain all the final states. So here what are my non-final states? Q0, Q1, Q3, Q4, Q5, Q6 and Q7. And what are my final states? I have only one final state here which is Q2, this one. So I put it in another set. So we are done with zero equivalence and the second one is one equivalence. Now how do we write the one equivalence? For writing the one equivalence, you have to use this row of zero equivalence and check if the states in the same set are one equivalent to each other or not. And how do you do it? You take two states and you check where do they go in getting inputs 0 and 1. And if they go to the states contained in the same set, then they are one equivalent, otherwise they are not. Let's see how to do this. Let me check Q0 and Q1. Q0 and Q1 on getting input 0, they go to Q1 and Q6. Q1 and Q6 fall in the same set, so it is fine. And on getting input 1, where do they go? They go to Q5 and Q2. Q5 is in this set, but Q2 is in another set. So they cannot be one equivalent to each other. Q0 and Q1 cannot be one equivalent. So I'll make a separate set for Q1 over here. Now let me check Q3. So Q3 and Q0, this Q3 and Q0, on getting input 0, where do they go? They go to Q1 and Q2. Q1 is in this set and Q2 is in another set. So it is clear from the first step itself that Q0 and Q3 are not one equivalent. Now let me check if Q1 and Q3 are one equivalent. Q1 and Q3 on getting input 0, they go to Q6 and Q2. Q6 is in this set, Q2 is in another set. Again, Q3 and Q1 cannot be one equivalent. So I have to make a separate set for Q3 also. Now let me check Q4. Q4, let me check it with Q0. Q0 and Q4 on getting input 0, they go to Q1 and Q7. Q1 and Q7 fall in the same set, so it is fine. Now on getting input 1, where do they go? Q0 goes to Q5 and Q4 goes to Q5. So they are the same states. So again it is fine and hence we can say that Q0 and Q4 are one equivalent. Q4 are one equivalent. And now let me check for Q5. Now Q5 I can check with either Q0 or Q4 because these two are already one equivalent to each other. So if it is one equivalent to either of them, it will be equivalent with both of them. So let me just check Q4 and Q5. Q4 and Q5 on getting input 0 they go to Q7 and Q2. Q7 is in this set, Q2 is in another set. So they cannot be one equivalent. So let me check it with Q1. Q5 and Q1. Q1 on getting input 0 goes to Q6 and Q5 goes to Q2. Q6 and Q2 fall in different sets so they cannot be one equivalent to each other. Now let me check it with Q3. Q3 and Q5. Q3 and Q5 on input 0 they go to Q2, Q2. Same states, same set, fine. And on input 1 where do they go? Q6, Q6. Again same states so it is fine. So we can say that Q3 and Q5 are one equivalent to each other. So if you check for Q6 and Q7, you can find that Q6 will be one equivalent to Q0, Q4 and Q7 will be one equivalent with Q1. If you solve this, you can just get this. 
and uh, remaining one is q2 so i'll put it in another set q2 so this will be what you get if you continue to solve it now our next step is the two equivalents now how do i write the two equivalents writing two equivalents you have to use this rows of one equivalents for checking so how do i do i have to check if the sets states in the same set are two equivalent to each other so let me check for q0 and q4 q0 and q4 on getting input 0 they go to q1 q7 q1 and q7 fall in the same set it is fine and on input 1 where do they go they go to q5 and q5 same states so it is fine so we can say q0 and q4 are two equivalent to each other q0 and q4 are two equivalent now let me check for q6 if is it still two equivalent to q4 and q0 so I'll, i can just check it with q4 q4 and q6 on input 0 it goes to q7 and this goes to q6 q7 is here but q6 is here they are in separate sets so i cannot put q6 along with these two anymore q6 will form a separate set by itself because it is not two equivalent to q0 or q4 okay so in the same way if you check for this you will find that q1 and q7 they are two equivalent to each other and also q3 and q5 also are two equivalent to each other and q2 will stay by itself as it is okay so we finish two equivalents and the next step that we have to do is three equivalents three equivalents and how do you do three equivalents in order to check for three equivalents you have to use this row of two equivalents and check if these states in the same set are three equivalent to each other or not so let me check for q0 and q4 q0 and q4 on getting input 0 they go to q1 q7 q1 and q7 are in the same set it's fine and on input 1 where do they go q5 and q5 q5 and q5 are same states so q0 and q4 are three equivalent to each other so that is how you do for three equivalents by checking this row so in the same way if you continue you will find that you will get q6 over here then you will also find that q1 and q7 are three equivalent to each other in the same way you will also find that q3 and q5 are three equivalent to each other and also q2 will come here as it is and now if you look observe carefully you can see that the, the row of two equivalents and three equivalents are the same there is no change so when you see that two consecutive steps are not having any change then it is time to stop the procedure this is your final step you don't have to continue further so we can make the new dfa for this and here how many states do we have this is one state two state three state four state five states so we have five states so this will be the new five states that we will be having in the minimized version of our dfa so here i'll draw the new dfa over here but before that let me copy down this original table over here so that we can refer that to fill up the next table okay so here i have my original dfa which was there in the question and then here i have made this table for our new minimized dfa so my states here are q0 q4 which is here then q6 q1 q7 q3 q5 and q2 so i have written the states here and we notice that in an original dfa q0 was my initial state so in this dfa the state that contains q0 that is q0 q4 will be my initial state or the starting state and here q2 was my final state so here also q2 is my final state so let's see where does this states go on getting input 0 and 1 q0 and q4 and getting input 0 where do they go you can just check this by either checking q0 or q4 because both q0 and q4 are here so on getting input 0 where does q0 go it goes to q1 so it will go to q1 so what is q1 in my new state in my new state q1 is the state q1 q7 so instead of q1 i will write q1 q7 okay and on getting input 1 where does it go it goes to q5 and instead of q5 what i have to write is q3 q5 the state that contains q5 is q3 q5 okay now q6 where does it go q6 on getting input 0 it goes to q6 itself 
here also q6 is my q6 itself and on in getting input 1 it goes to q4 so instead of q4 what i have to write q0 q4 the state that contains q4 so in the same way if you fill up this table you can see that q1 q7 on getting input 0 it goes to q6 and on getting input 1 also it goes to q2 and q3 q5 on getting input 0 it goes to q2 and on getting input 1 it goes to q6 and q2 on getting input 0 it goes to q0 q4 and on getting input 1 it goes to q2 so here i have the minimized dfa for this dfa so in the original one we had eight states but here i have only one two three four five states and if you check the working you'll find that both the workings of this dfas are exactly the same so this is how you construct the minimum dfa so i hope this was clear to you so see you in the next lecture with another example